Joining us now, covering the NFL for CBS Sports, it's Garrett Padel. Good morning, Garrett. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Garrett. Morning. Thank you so much for having me on, guys. Always happy to talk ball. Week of preseason down. Uh, football is is back. It is. Football is back. And I want to ask you this because I know you wrote about uh, Matt LaFleur with the Packers saying he doesn't like the term number one wide receiver. Would he have said that if he had a true number one wide receiver? That's a great question. I still don't think so because I think – one of the earlier kind of years of his tenure with Aaron Rodgers, with Devontae Adams, I mean, Devontae Adams, who's now in Las Vegas with you guys, phenomenal receiver, all pro, uh, stats incredible. But, you know, it was a little predictable. I think Matt LaFleur really enjoys how Jordan Love attacks the field and isn't overly, re- overly reliant on one player when you have Jaden Reed, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Dontavian Wicks, who he threw 65-yard touchdown to, on his second throw of the preseason against the Browns the other day. So I think what he really likes is Jordan Love just looking for the best matchup, going through the route progressions. And also from the other side, defensively, it's hard for defenses to sometimes game plan for them because they can't just say, oh, we're going to rotate you know, two dudes over to Christian Watson's side of the ball or Jaden Reed's side of the ball. It's, it's, it's a matchup-based offense, and I think he really appreciates that versatility. I'm curious your thoughts on, like, roster building with what the Packers have where they they don't have that true number one. They've got – and they're on some rookie contracts, so it makes it a lot easier to do with the salary cap. But we saw a couple years ago Devontae Adams got traded, A.J. Brown got traded, Tyreek Hill got traded. Like, number one guys were getting moved, and we're we're seeing the wide receiver contracts. They're pretty high now. We also see rookies come in and produce right away. Like, what are your thoughts on kind of comparing what the Packers have versus – I guess what's been the more standard thought process of building your wide receiver group uh, for an NFL season? I mean, I think what the Packers have is advantageous because they have a bunch of guys who in a vacuum, if they were on other teams, would maybe be like a young, you know, number one or number two target, certainly top two when you talk about their four guys and uh, Reed, Watson, Dobbs, and Wicks. All of those guys have had different moments, whether it was late in the regular season or in the postseason uh, last year. But I think it's almost a good thing because they have so much depth and talent. They spread it around, so not one guy is accumulating, you know, a massive amount of the catches and numbers that go along with all of that. So when it comes time to negotiate contracts, it, it, it might be a very unique situation for the agents who represent all four of those guys in a few years because um, all of those guys were either first or second year players last year. So it's gonna, those guys, they won't be up for contracts for another probably two years. And then if all four of those guys are still kind of splitting, you know, the stats, they might not be able to command as much potentially as what you're seeing. You mentioned A.J. Brown, Devonta Adams, and the like uh, asking this offseason. So I think it's going to be fascinating to watch to see if they really do stick with the there's no true wide receiver one you know, over the next couple of seasons, especially after they paid Jordan Love a record-setting deal. Uh, We asked this about Hassan Reddick in terms of the Jets uh, going to trade for him, uh, knowing what the deal was in Philly. Why trade for him and not realize he's going to hold out or not realize he wants a big deal? I think that was a major fumble by the New York Jets. I mean, pretty much as you've seen, almost any time you trade for a star player in the last year of his contract, I mean, it's pretty much unsaid. You have to work out a new contract. And Reddick has been someone who's top five in the league in sacks over the last four years. So, I mean, his production warrants a new deal. Um, you know, he's totaled 27 sacks in the last two seasons, which is pretty good. And, you know, and, and Philly went to the Super Bowl his first year on the team and, you know, was a playoff team again last year. So, I, I think that was a major misstep by. GM Joe Douglas and the Jets not getting that done, especially because they let Bryce Huff, a young pass rusher who in in a somewhat, if you look at his snaps, limited sample size a year ago, was number two in the NFL in quarterback pressure rate behind only the Dallas Cowboys' Micah Parsons. They let him walk. The Eagles signed him, and then they traded for Hassan Reddick from the Eagles, and it's like, okay, if you're letting one of the best, you know, quarterback pressure rate guys leave, you should probably make sure Hassan Reddick, the guy you traded for, is going to show up. So I'm kind of surprised a little bit by the seemingly lack of sense of urgency by the Jets to not immediately sign him. 
Uh, what does Jerry Jones say next to anger one of his players? <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, so I was out at Cowboys uh, training camp in Oxnard, California, uh, last week, and I'm based in Dallas and cover, uh, and I'm at a lot of Cowboys stuff, a lot of their games, practices, plugged in with the team. So I talked to him a lot, and I was standing right next to Jerry when he said, he didn't have a, a sense of urgency to uh, resign CD Lamb. And my eyebrows went all the way up. And what was even funnier about that whole exchange is uh, another veteran reporter on the Cowboys beat. He just simply followed up with Jerry, why? And Jerry laughed and, and said, you know, I've been to high school, I've been to college. And it's like basically trying to explain, you know, I'm a, I'm a smart guy, I have a college degree. And then he said, well, actually... I don't really have a reason. You can pick any reason you want. He didn't even really know why he said it. I mean, I know why he said it. It's negotiating tactics, but obviously it immediately almost kind of backfired with CD tweeting out LOL period and then Micah Parsons retweeting the tweet standing by CD Lamb not appreciating the comments. Uh, I have no idea what's going to come out of his mouth. I think he realized that the blowback he received immediately on social media from CD and then Mike are retweeting it. It might have been a little bit more than he bargained for when he said what he said. Uh, I feel like cause he immediately attempted to walk the comments back on the Cowboys' internal uh, pregame show prior to their uh, game against the Rams on Sunday. So I, I think he learned his lesson, and he might not be too chaotic you know, in the, in the coming weeks for the preseason. But then again, it's Jerry Jones. He's a showman. You never know. Uh, J.J. McCarthy already out, uh, there, so there goes one rookie. Were you impressed with uh, uh, other rookies the first week more than others? Uh, I, I loved, I mean, this is, you know, I feel like pretty uncontroversial thing to say. I liked what I saw from Caleb Williams. You saw him at USC, the throwing on the run and the arm ang- different arm angles he threw with, and he looked like the USC version of himself against the Bills. He made an awesome tight window throw to convert a third and 12 early on DJ Moore on a scramble. Um, you know, and some people have compared him to Patrick Mahomes throughout the pre-draft process, right or wrong. He had a Mahomesian kind of just little flick as the pockets collapsing the running back DeAndre Swift and Swift took it for about 34 yards, turned that into a big play. Like what I saw from him, Jaden Daniels, number two pick. He only played one drive, but um, you know, he, ripped a nice 40-yarder down the right sideline to Deami Brown before running in a touchdown. I thought uh, he looked good in very limited work. And uh, Michael Penix Jr. for the Falcons, he had a nice 41-yarder down the sideline to a receiver to cap a day in which he finished with like 104 yards on 9 of 16 passing. So I think, uh, and, and even Bo Nix, who, in my opinion, I didn't think he was a, uh, First round guy. I thought he was a second round quarterback. He looked pretty good. He looked pretty good. You know, he, he completed like 15 or 16 of his 21 passes. The yards per pass attempt was low, just like it was in college, but, you know, 125 yards and a touchdown. I mean, he had a nice day. What do you think's best case scenario this year for the Bears? Can they win that division if Caleb Williams is awesome, or are they just a third place team no matter what? I, th- I would still be mightily surprised if they overtook the line. I think the Lions and Packers are kind of in a tier of their own this year in the NFC North, uh, just because, you know, what those two teams showed last year, both those teams were round two and NFC championship game. And both those teams brought back a lot of their young pieces. Um, you know, and Caleb Blums, he's a rookie. You know, to the C.J. Stroud experience of going from two or three wins to ten and winning your division like the Houston Texans had last year, it's pretty rare. Um, but I, I very much see them. Uh, I wrote an NFC contention tiers article a, a few days ago, and I said this is a team firmly in the wild card hunt, and I would be not surprised at all for them to be one of the top NFC wild cards. I think the NFC North, just in general, top to bottom, is going to be one of the most competitive divisions of football. I think just Caleb Williams being a rookie, even though he has the great supporting cast, I think he's one of the only top five quarterback picks ever to have two receivers that have over 1,200 yards uh, the previous year in um, D.J. Moore and Keenan Allen. So I, he's got a great supporting cast. But I just think with the rookie part of it, you know, he looks great on the one preseason uh, game that we've seen from him. But, you know, he might have some bumps along the way that, you know, He's going to be great and will have the Bears, in my opinion, contending for NFC North Division titles, but I don't know if it's right away. All right, before we let you go, uh, can you give us a prediction? Where does Brandon Ayuk play week one of this season? 
So the reporting came out yesterday that San Francisco has a deal in place with the Steelers, and you know now it's the ball is kind of in San Francisco's court to hit the button to do it. But that like the Steelers have a contract worked out. You know we talked about Hassan Reddick not having something ready when they traded. It sounds like Pittsburgh has it all lined up if if the trade goes down. But it kind of feels like Ayuk realizes his best situation is in San Francisco and is now at this point maybe trying to squeeze out a few more pennies from the 49ers. I just, I just would be shocked for a player to look around and say, yeah, I want to go to the team that's got a washed-up version of Russell Wilson and or Justin Fields as my quarterback instead of saying, I want to stay with the reigning NFC champs. So I think all that being said, all this drama – I think Ayuk's going to look around and say, I still want to be in San Francisco. I think he's going to be on the 49ers week one. Well, he is Garrett Padell from CBS Sports. Garrett, thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, Garrett. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so there's Garrett Padell on the NFL.